Hi, you guys send me a ton of ideas and I pick interesting ones among them and put them all in my Word document. But the thing is that a lot of them will never see the light of day. The reason is that a lot of them may be very short to react to or may not excite me enough to make a video about it. The issue is that the list is getting quite long and out of control. So I thought let's go through it together and delete one by one. Okay, ready? Here we go. This is my list and the first item is opening electronic fob doors with taser. Let's look at it. Okay, so this door uses these keypads to unlock. The guy has a taser you can buy off Amazon. <laughs> he zaps the keypad and the door opens. Simple as that. Unlocked? What is this garbage? <laughs> it seems like every single door he's zapping is opening. Where is this place actually? Oh, there you go, some characters. I think they were written in Russian. To be fair, it seems like those systems are quite old. If it was me designing it, I would design it such that if the electronics fails, it would fail in a safe and secure position. You know, for example, if your car computer fails during driving, you don't want the gas tank to explode. See, all electronics are typically designed with radiation immunity in mind. But that doesn't mean you can't generate even stronger radiation and make them fail. And you must think about what happens if your system system fails. Does it kill the user or not? Now the taser is not generating a passcode. What's happening here is that it's just probably resetting the electronics. And it sounds quite dumb but it seems like when the electronic is resetting by default it's opening the door when it should keep it locked. I just realized something. In his videos those doors are the type that are held shut with electromagnets. If we can disrupt the circuit like reset them it is possible that those electromagnets temporarily turn off and we can open the door. Should try that. I do have my homemade taser which is strong enough to create some interference. Now we just need to find a building with those systems and try to zap it and hopefully reset the electronics and then maybe the door opens. This is what I'm talking about. A large electromagnet that holds the iron bar closed with a force of around 300 kilograms. And this is the control. If I reset it or damage it somehow, it would release the electromagnet and the door would open. Although it's covered with metal, I'm pretty sure it's very hard to interfere with. Yeah, I have blown up a hotel in London before. But this is our own apartment. I'm not gonna damage it and risk getting caught by the security cameras. And that's exactly why in the middle of the night, I'm going to a different apartment with a similar system, but a crappy old one and doesn't have any security cameras either. Here it is, an old one with a crappy old LCD. Hopefully I can reset it easily. Okay, let's zap the panel and hope for the best. Let's see. The doors are closed. to zap it differently. I have to discharge directly to the panel maybe. It didn't reset, damn it. It doesn't work. Ouch. Damn it, I zapped myself. The system seems to be resetting, but the damn door doesn't open. This is an example of a good design. Those old Russian systems must be a pile of junk. Well, in general, if you know your physics and science a little bit, you would understand these things better and why they could or could not work. That's why this video is sponsored by Brilliant. We all know you're stuck at home with nothing much to do and you want to be brilliant. So go to brilliant.org slash electroboom and get 20% off of your annual membership or gift the membership to someone you love so they can learn good things. And you can learn new things or brush up on your knowledge through interactive classes or awesome problem-solving quizzes. What else do you need during your off time? Do it. Well, I thought it would be shorter, but anyway, first one is done. Delete. Second one, drawing 3D objects on air. I think I remember this one. Yeah, this was a Kickstarter project that was both fake and not fake. Let's see. Vector display, and it is a volumetric display system. It draws images in the air with light. Every control you have is going to be... See, you see this awesome looking cube? Entity. You'll have and all of a sudden you have, have this garbage circling line. There's room in education. 
What the machine seems to do is that it shoots up columns or curtains of say humid air and tries to hit them with a moving beam of laser to illuminate a spot in mid-air like a pixel. It moves these columns or curtains and the laser trying to draw a 3D image in mid-air like a hologram. The issue is that the air is chaotic and wobbly and doesn't make any clean image. So I think what's happening is that in some shots they might be using CGI to make their product look better than it is and then in some shots they are showing the real thing which looks like garbage. With this technology you can, you can create... This, this looks real. Scenery and, and this should be what's happening. Holographic vector display. <laughs> it's funny how the guy is impressed by seeing a box in front of him. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Did you see that? See when he turns it on, it looks like garbage and then they quickly switch to this fake image. This must be CGI created. There are a few reasons I'm saying this is fake. For example, why the lines of laser are only passing through the corners of the shape. The laser should be passing through every single illuminated pixel through the shape. The other reason is that the air doesn't move fast enough for such a moving animated image. So very likely your laser beam will hit the right pixel and then the wrong pixel on a column that's not out of the way yet. So I'm thinking they used video effects to lure people to support them. Yeah, that's the best you can get out of this device in my opinion. This is what it is, passing laser through water vapor and call it a hologram. Hey look, I have a hologram, give me money! Yeah, this was a while back, like back in 2016 and they made more than their goal. So let's see how they're doing now. I invoke my rights under Kickstarter's terms of use. I demand a full refund for my pledged amount. <laughs> Has anyone got a refund? Yeah, everyone is demanding a refund. I demand a full refund. Lol at you. <laughs> Told you guys, he's indeed a scammer. Yeah, I think they took the money and ditched everyone. Yeah, I'm a little bit late, eh? I should have made a video back then and stop people from investing into this junk. Although, you know, at the corner of your mind, you always hope that something like this can come into life, but... Well, too bad for everyone who invested in this. Delete. Okay, next one. RF energy from the environment. I think it was some impossible energy harvesting mumbo jumbo. What the hell is this? Smart card solutions? Did they change their business? What is this other link? Clean space. What? Your connection is not private? Back to safety. Well, apparently these were garbage too. Delete. Hey, it's slowly cleaning up. <laughs> What is next one? Suspicious magnet rail gun. Let's see. Well, this is some old video from back in 2012. Yeah, I remember this one. They had a bunch of magnets together that supposedly forced another magnet through and shot it out like a rail gun. See? Now the resolution is so low, you can barely see it. As you guys can see, there's no electricity. So what do you think guys? Does it work? Do you think we can put a series of magnets together in a circle and put another magnet between them and it just keeps going forever? No! Well, the video wasn't necessarily fake, but it wasn't like that the magnets would suck in another magnet and shoot it out from the other side. Let me show you how it would work. So first off, you have to put a bunch of magnets like this together, which is very hard to do because they're north and south. Is south Souths? Souths? are very close to each other. And then you bring another magnet close, which is fine. The south likes to be close to the north and north likes to be close to the south side. So this is a stable position and it doesn't want to move anymore. But then you get more aggressive and push the magnet further into the magnet hole and put energy into it. South doesn't mind it because it wants to be at the center of all the North Poles. But the North Pole of the magnet hates all the other North Poles and wants to repel them. So at some point you see the South Pole is attracted by the North Poles in front of it and the North Pole is repelled by the other North Poles behind it. So it accelerates forward and shoots out from the other side. So basically you put energy into it to put the magnet between the other magnets and then it shoots out releasing the energy you already put into it. So it is not like a flow flowing magnetic river that you put something into it and it just goes with the flow. And if you make this into a giant circle and put this magnet between them, it just stays where you put it. Permanent magnets don't create flowing fields. Delete. Okay, what's next? Garbage Wi-Fi to USB BS. <laughs> what is this? Get free Wi-Fi internet 100% work. Hmm. Well, he's making a coil like so, tries to solder them to a power prong. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't solder to it because, well, it doesn't. 
and he does it anyway. How? With a crazy glue? He has a USB charger with power wires only. What is he trying to do? Is he trying to charge his cell phone using this antenna? Wirelessly, I suppose? There we have it. So he's showing that his phone is offline and doesn't have internet. He plugs in his contraption to his phone and he gets internet? What? Internet using a charger cable with only power and ground? And he has 1.7 million views, 12,000 likes. 12,000 is not much actually. Let's see his description. Today I'll show get free Wi-Fi internet work. It's a very helpful video, oh, I see. All of you can make this if try at your house. At least some of these videos have the decency to show maybe deep in the description that the video is fake. This guy is saying try this at home. Waste your resources. Cut your cables in half. Do I even have to tell you why this doesn't work? Okay, first off, he is not using the USB data lines. USB doesn't transmit data through its power lines. That doesn't even matter. You can't just get internet by sticking an antenna up into the air. There are super complex protocols from transmitter to receiver to talk to each other. You don't just stick a wire into the air and assume everything is fine. Why are we still here? <sighs> Let's see what the comments are saying. Why did you put the phone in flight mode? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I did it. Thank you, my friend. My phone has just blown. <laughs> Can you imagine if somebody plugs it into their phone and the other side plugs it into the live wires? Congratulations, you found a way through which your mother downloaded you into this world. Delete. Okay, what else do we have? Zero energy. Eh. Croson, crazy Russian guys make crazy EMP stuff. <laughs> yeah, some of their stuff is crazy. <laughs> I'll do these later. I got enough cancer for one day. And I was thinking if you guys have interesting stuff like these that you want me to quickly review, post them into my subreddit and if they get high votes, I'll add them to my list and check it. So do it. And if you really want to watch something useful, go to brilliance.org. Using my link, you can become a free member or get 20% off of your annual premium membership for full access. Or if you'd like to help someone else fill their time and brain with knowledge, you can gift Brilliance premium membership. Tons of things to be learned from computer, math and science. And like I always say, what better game to play than solving greatly designed problems that actually teach you something compared to these fake videos that I have to rectify. Thanks for watching.